There are many reasons to love a video game. Maybe it has great gameplay that never ages like Unreal Tournament did. Maybe it has a great sense of humor like Monkey Island. Maybe the setting, characters and story are so out of left field that you can't help but to love them, like Anachronox. And then there are those few rare gems that you end up loving because of the mood. A game with mood is one you wouldn't mind spending endless hours in all alone even if you end up doing pretty much nothing. It's a game that can reach out to you but it doesn't grab hold, it doesn't leave you in awe, it doesn't saturate your senses or captivate you with action. Instead, a game with mood will embrace you gently, it will caress you and slowly drown you in its world until you feel it until it soaks in through your every pore and you may as well call it home. And it's not because of the atmosphere. A horror game has atmosphere. A really well done level in an FPS has atmosphere. Something to make the world immersive. And while atmosphere is a part of it, it's not enough. There's also style. The kind of style that you see in something like Vice City. You get what it's all about from just one look at the intro. But mood is more than that, it's atmosphere, style and something else. Something I struggle to find a word for. Now the Germans probably have a word for it. One of those that's about nine syllables long and I can pronounce it. I could probably just call it magic and try to get away with that. But it wouldn't really help that much when it comes to understanding the concept, explaining it or replicating it. It would be like saying Granny's food was so damn tasty because it has a secret ingredient. Love and not just lots of salty fat. To that end, let's talk about Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. A game drenched in mood that exudes atmosphere and style like few I've ever seen before. A game that I will play again and again even though I do next to nothing in it. I play it just so I can be there, just to feel it. Of course, it doesn't hurt that Bloodlines is a fine game after you patch it with the latest community updates. If you haven't played it before, I can sum it up simply as Deus Ex with vampires. The cool kind of vampires that wear sunglasses, long coats, use katana swords and for the most part are gruesome monsters pretending to be human until the lie quells the beast lurking beneath the mask. It was developed some time ago by the legendary studio Troika, a studio that produced only three games and yet managed to create something grand in each of them. I can't help but imagine what it would have been like if the equivalent of a Kickstarter existed back then, and that exact group of people would have gone on to make more games. Bloodlines was an ordeal to finish on time. They had people working overtime just about non-stop for three years. That's the kind of crunch you don't want to experience. The scope of the game, the complexity and depth it reached, required more time, more resources and more people to get done. Sadly, those were luxuries Troika did not have, but what it did have was people with skill, passion and just about the right amount of insanity to dream the impossible and commit to it. Some would call the result a flawed masterpiece, but that really does it a disservice, because its greatest achievement cannot be overshadowed by bugs, errors, glitches or stuff that was cut out because it wasn't up to certain standards. Oh sure, if you actually want to play it end to end, you'll find a bunch of flaws that can be patched out because the community was just that great and did a lot of work in fixing up the game. But the core of it, the essence, is regardless a masterpiece. You wouldn't fault Venus for not having arms, is what I'm saying. Bloodline starts out as any good RPG based on a venerable pen and paper game would, with a lot of character creation choices, even one that makes you unable to ever touch a duck. I avoided choosing that one because, well, I like ducks, sadly there are no ducks in the game so I could have been a ninja. Maybe it doesn't have as many options as you'd get in the actual Vampire the Masquerade game, but 
it's enough for a video game. I won't get into details about the rules and mechanics, that's not the point of this show. I'll just say that regardless of what you choose, the game will offer you an option to play in that way. This is where the whole Deus Ex with Vampires part comes in. You enter this world of darkness as a newly turned vampire, a child of the night. Everything you were is irrelevant. Everything you know is a lie. It is a great starting point for the player. As a bewildered and confused spawn of a dead sire, you must claw and fang your way to, well, not to greatness. This is where some of the magic of bloodlines comes in. You are not the savior. You are not the hero foretold by legend. For the most part, you're just some schmuck the prince took pity on because the other vampires at the town meeting were giving him mean looks over just having executed your sire. You know, the one who was also a schmuck, dumb enough to not ask permission before making a new vampire. That's a big no-no in this world. This introduction accomplishes two things. Firstly, it makes the story less cliché. Secondly, it grounds it a bit more into reality because, let's face it, none of us are ever going to be a vampire foretold in an ancient prophecy to save the world from evil. Best we can hope is to be that schmuck. And sure, you'll always be a simpleton compared to the ancient monsters that walk the earth, but compared to mortals, in this game you are already a god. It gives you the sense of a restrained power fantasy, like you're a predator that stalks the night, a monster hiding in the open, docile by choice, but at any moment capable of raining hell upon the foolish cattle. Until someone brings a shotgun to the party, because you're not really Dracula material here. Start small. Terrorize some hobos and some sewer rats and then move up to the big leagues. Bloodlines is a reality that's shifted. A world like ours that looks like it should, smells like it should, but off by just a tiny bit. Just enough to let in all that darkness and all those monsters that hide in it. It's a world where you'll go home to your cozy apartment, check your mailbox for letters, it's an old game after all, they still had letters back then, then you can log into your email account and read pages of green text on black backgrounds. You'll even watch the news on TV or listen to Deb on the radio. Now while the TV is as stale and lacking in personality as you'd expect from corporate media, the radio isn't. Between the commercials about some good fucking chicken, the political ads and Deb of Night, you've got one of the best radios ever made in a video game. It rivals with the best GTA has ever offered and the fact that there isn't more of it just goes to show that the world cares not for fairness and justice. Hello LA, you're up way past your bedtime aren't you? Hope you've slipped into something comfortable, I know I have. If you're new to town or just new to this whole radio thing, you're listening to the Deb of Night. The only girl who will spend the night with you and leave first thing in the morning, guaranteed. Deb's ever so sweet voice is the only one you're gonna hear coming out of thin air, unless you're insane, in which case you've got other problems to deal with, like arguing with stop signs and having all your dialogue be the insane ramblings of a shattered mind peeking through the veil of time. What I mean is that you've got nothing to take you out of the experience. There are no inexplicable audio logs found in a random dumpster that somehow belongs to the grand architect of an underwater city, or logbooks. Sure, there's email, but that's what email does. Everything is how it should be how you feel it should be. Even though there are vampires and werewolves running around, the world feels right. It takes much more effort on the part of the developer to make it so. More magic. The game takes place in a few semi-open locations like Santa Monica, downtown Los Angeles, Hollywood and Chinatown. 
and beyond them many mission specific locations filled with so much detail. This isn't a big game in terms of sheer size, it's not Skyrim. Most hub areas are quite small but in them you'll find so many wonderful things, little touches that make everything just better, like a shadow following you which you can only see if you use your vampiric powers. You'll find such things even in missions, take the museum for example. You walk in and just as you're about to turn the corner, you're nose to nose with a giant raptor. That actually startled me the first time. There's even a note attached to it, one of the employees put it there as a joke to scare their friends as in one of the employees of the museum. And guess what, it works on vampires too. The detail is fantastic because the detail makes sense. You've got hospitals with patients yearning for life and blood banks. There are nightclubs where you can dance and feed and ogle a Janet for hours, all while listening to great music. Music that makes you feel this world, understand it. Music that sets the tone for their society. Music that has lyrics like in the violent silence of a dream within a dream. How can you not love that? That's commitment to a style. The ambient soundtrack is great as well. Just about everything regarding the audiovisual aspect is top notch, or was in 2004, source having aged a bit. And then there's the last bit, the one that makes this spell complete. A sense of apocalyptic dread. Oh, what times must these be when even the smaller gods fear the night? Gehenna is what they call it. The end of time. An age when the ancients will rise, devour their children and slaughter the world. An age when the father himself, Cain, will return. There is power in this, in this concept. It's probably more noticeable for people who remember the end of something else, the end of something grand. Such as the end of the last millennium, the end of the cold war, the last days before the wall fell. It's a sense of impending change or imminent destruction, uncertainty of the future embedded into the heart of every bit of this world, etched upon the walls, scrawled on the faces of every vampire. Dread, unease, fear. You may have felt something similar if you've played the fantastic Broken Sword or even Mass Effect 3, which in spite of other faults, dealt with the end of days well enough. If you haven't played those, just think about Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, about the world after the finale of that movie, the coming of the end of the third age. Put everything together and you've got mood, a world that feels real to you and feels itself at you, if that makes any sense. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines is a wonder to behold, a non-linear adventure where you're not the hero, not the villain, you're barely a catalyst for change. More of a pawn actually, considering almost every other character has been around for centuries, accumulating wealth and power, you wouldn't expect to be much more. The gameplay is great too. Combat may not be all there as an action game, but it's still good enough. And making that took effort. The kind of hard work and conscious planning you rarely see today. Because nowadays we have game characters that tell you to push a button on your keyboard. Or, and this is the best part, we have games with diaries of people turning into monsters that somehow have time to write grrr, growl in perfect penmanship. What I'm getting at is that Diablo 3 was crap at setting up any sort of mood. You can find Bloodlines on Steam. And if you're seeing this at any time other than the Steam Halloween sale, then it's probably still expensive as shit being an Activision game. None of that money goes to the people that made it, or even to supporting a Steam forum for it. 
You'd think they'd at least care enough to integrate some of the community updates in the standard version, but they don't. Activision is, after all, the honey badger of the gaming industry. They just don't care. Apart from being one of the finest games ever made, this is also the best vampire game you'll ever play. As in, based on the property of the World of Darkness from White Wolf. Especially since CCP and White Wolf weren't capable of doing anything with the franchise. World of Darkness MMO was in development for some time, but it got staked through the heart and dragged into sunlight, where it promptly burst into flames. Yet, things are not without hope. Paradox Interactive now owns White Wolf and the entire World of Darkness. And if you can't trust a company whose CEO dresses up like a vampire at fan gatherings that aren't even on Halloween to make a good vampire game, then whom can you trust? I urge you to try this game. You need to understand it. You need to see it, experience it. Feel it for yourself. Maybe then you'll understand how good a game can be. How well a game can be made. How much we're missing out on by taking shortcuts and not thinking things through. This is a level of game design well above the norm today. It was well above the norm when it was released. It is a golden standard to which many people don't even dare to dream to aspire to. Because making it destroyed the Troika. Which is a shame. But this game was worth it. If you enjoyed this show, hit the like button, subscribe and share it with your friends. Or, if you thought it was horrible, then share it with your enemies and make them suffer. We shall be your weapon of vengeance. But if you liked what you saw, you could, I don't know, maybe donate because basically YouTube is horrible at revenue by using the link in the description or just buy my book. It's a fantasy book about, well, a lot of stuff. I guarantee it won't suck, and if it does suck, you can find me here and complain about it.